Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at something that's a little easier than factoring. We'll be looking at domains. Um, we'll be looking at the way you can express domains in interval notation and more specifically inequalities um, and how those inequalities look a whole lot like the domain that we've been working with uh, when we're looking at functions. So let's get started. So when we look at these functions, this is awesome. looks a whole lot simpler than what we've been doing in the past with all the factoring and everything. So hopefully this will be a little break and then there's still review of factoring at the end. So remember, if you have questions on factoring, you have questions on the longer types of problems, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock. We're sitting in our office hours. We're happy to help. Um, we're pretty much there all day uh, and we're, that's the best time when you have a specific question and you need help with it. All right, here we go. So if we look at this, it says graph then express an interval notation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to graph it. And usually when you think of the word graph, you think of that x, y uh, coordinate system. But right now, I only see an x. So we're only going to be working right now on the x plane or on a number line, which is awesome. So if we're only working on a number line, then we only need to worry about the things around that number. So the number we're looking at is 4. So I'm going to put 4 right in the middle. And you know, I'm just going to go a couple numbers to each side. So I'll go 3, 2, 5, 6. And then I just need to know how to read that. You know, the alligator eats the bigger number. Some say Pac-Man eats the bigger number. Some say uh, the arrow is pointing to the smaller number. Or as the bigger side gets bigger, the smaller side gets the smaller. However you want to remember it, this is saying that x is greater than or equal to 4. So think in your brain, well, what is greater than or equal to 4? I know 5 is. I know 6 is, I know 7 is, and I can kind of start to see that pattern. So I'm just going to shade that in slowly. And then as I get to that 4, I have to ask myself, does it include or not include it? Does it include the 4 or not include it? And if it does include it, I draw a circle. And I say, does it include it? It has the line. It does include it because of this line underneath. So I'm going to shade that circle in. And that's the graph. Looks just like that. Another way you'll see that graph often is you'll see a bracket right at the graph. Looks like that, and that's okay too. Those both are perfect ways to write that interval. Or you might see both. Um, if you're working on a project and you see it, it's okay. It's good to know that both of those exist. Um, so then we ask ourselves, okay, well, so then how do we write this? Well, we write it just the way it looks. We take that same bracket and we draw that bracket. The hard bracket or the squared off bracket means that it includes that number. And the soft bracket or the circular one that looks like this means that it does not include, or as we get to infinity, we never include infinity. So we've got the hard bracket, and we're saying it starts at 4, and it goes on forever. So we're going to go infinity, soft bracket, call it a day. That's saying in that, in that range of numbers, or that domain because it's x, um, in that set of numbers, we go from 4, including 4, to infinity, forever and ever and ever to the right. Okay? I think... I think that's enough to get us through this. I might just make a mention of if you have two numbers, like a number three, then you really need to think about both sides. And you need to think about how one side might be open and the other side might be closed. But that might be the only note for that. All right, here we can go backwards. This is just us literally going backwards. So let's take this one right here. We're still going to graph it. We're going to draw our number line. And we're going to say, where does it start at? One. Put one in the middle. I'll go zero. I'll go negative one. I'll go two. I'll go three. And we'll say, which way is it going? Well, it looks like it's going to the right. And it looks like it's a soft bracket going to the right forever. Another way you might see that same thing is a, a circle dot going to the right forever. Cool. We graphed it. Oh, and then we need to write it as an inequality. And all that is saying is x is, x is a number, right? And is x bigger than or smaller than 1? Well, it looks like it's always bigger than 1. Makes sense. Does it include it? No, because this is... A soft bracket or next to one, we don't include it under that number line. All right, so we've got inequalities. <laughs> so it should be pretty easy. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, we're going to look at solving them before you graph them. And, uh, and then I think there's just some practice factoring later. Yep. Then we jump straight to the greater problems. So let's look at solving one or two. So we solve these problems exactly like we solve other problems. What you do to one side of the equal sign? you have to do the other side. Make sense? Let's see. So just like when we're doing regular problems, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So I'll, I'll leave those lines. So we need to get x by itself. So we're going to go plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. Not too crazy. Not yet, at least. So now we're left with negative, oops, negative 4, 
four X, same signs, leave the signs alone. There's only one special case for the signs, which we will see. I'll get to one of those practice problems and we'll call it a day. Less than or equal to 12, all right? Then just like the other types of problems, we're gonna divide by four, divide by four, divide by four, end up with negative one less than x less than or equal to three. And then we'll graph this just like before, draw our number lines, draw it. I'm gonna go negative one, zero, one, two, three, perfect. So now we're looking at that number line and we're saying, okay, x is in between negative one with an open circle and three with a closed circle, and then we just shade it in. With our bracket notation, it'd look like open bracket, shade it in, close bracket. And draw that number line there, same number line. Okay, cool. I think it's worth doing this one right under it because it incorporates everything we just did and it does include that special uh, rule that you've probably heard before but I just skipped. Um, the special rule is if you divide by a negative, then you better flip the sign or signs. Flip the sign or signs in this case. This will be cool to do a harder example because if you can do the hard one, you can definitely do the easy one. So still going to draw those lines down the middle. Plus one, plus one, plus one. Ask yourself the question, did I divide by a negative? Nope, we're good. Don't flip the signs yet. Less than or equal to negative 5x. Oh, we can see what's going to happen already. Negative 10. All right, here we go. You ready for this? We're going to divide by a negative 5. Oh, we divided by a negative, so we have to, in that step, flip those signs around. The alligators literally just turn around. Just like you don't like negative numbers, I don't like negative numbers. Alligators don't like negative numbers. It makes them turn around. And then, or Pac-Man. So we're left with x, 5, negative 10. So what that's saying in our brains, we need to read it well. We need to think about what it's saying. It's saying that x has to be greater than or equal to 5. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I forgot to do the division. I just flipped it and didn't even do the division. Sorry about that. You were yelling at me in the screen. Divide, divided by a negative 5. Divided by a negative 5. So we end up with a negative 1 and a positive 2. So x has to be greater than negative 1, but less than or equal to negative 2. So we go negative one comma two, bracket notation. Ooh, I forgot the bracket notation above. Let's go rope it in. Soft bracket at negative one, hard bracket at three. Boom, sorry about that. I know that's kind of jumping back and forth, but it's important to solve them both ways, graphing and interval notation. So there's our graph, negative one, zero, one, two. It's almost the same thing. Filled in circle, filled in circle, shade the middle. Hard bracket, hard bracket, shade the middle. Draw that line again, just so you can see. Same numbers, just two different ways. Not too crazy. There's some practice factoring below. If you have questions factoring, let us know. I'll keep saying this until we get 10, 15 people in the office hours, but from eight to 12, we have office hours. We're happy to help, especially as we approach the rest of the class and it starts to get a little bit harder. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know, send us emails. Um, come to office hours, practice these on your own, and uh, start prepping for that test. And don't forget about our project coming up, our uh, project-based learning where we're splitting the class in half. I'll take half, Dr. Solis will take half, and we'll work together on that project. Look out for the discussion to see what, how that's going to shake out. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.